Now, in the early stages of business, what typically don't we have a lot of? Money. Typically, we don't have a lot of money. And when we consider what money is to a business, I want you to think about money as oxygen. And without oxygen, things fall over and they die. And so in order for a business to survive, especially at a high level, the most important skill that you need to learn how to master is the skill called sales or salesmanship. You need to provide a very high level of oxygen to keep the whole organism you know, nice and healthy. If you can't sell your product or service, you don't have a fucking business. You've got a hobby and an expensive one because chances are you're going to have costs associated with that hobby that if you don't actually match them with revenue, you're going to go fucking broke. Now, when we talk about business, I don't talk about business in the context of, oh, well, your business fails, suck it up, carry on. I've actually lost friends to suicide as a result of businesses failing. I've lost clients to suicide as a result of businesses failing. I've actually had friends and clients who've had mental health issues dramatically exacerbated as a result of businesses going bad. I've seen clients and friends lose their families, marriages break down, the whole kit and caboodle. Who has seen or heard something similar? in your own experience. So for me, I treat business very much like a life and death scenario. Although I've failed enough to know that business won't kill me, there are some people who aren't so lucky. And so when it comes to succeeding in this first stage, this is where it all happens. If you don't get this fundamental down, you will struggle with every other single stage that you're gonna go through. Salesmanship is critical. And so in the early stages of business, most people don't have money when it comes to investing in sales and marketing. And so in every startup that I've ever had, I've done what's called the triple F marketing strategy. Now, this is a writer down. The triple F, there's three Fs. I would approach all of my friends, I would approach all of my family, and I'd approach anyone foolish enough to get within eight feet. And this was my pitch. Hey, friend. Hey, family member. Hey, fool. I have just about to launch a new startup, and I need to practice my pitch on someone and get some honest and genuine feedback. Would you be willing to allow me just to pitch my product to you, and all I want at the end of it is just your feedback? Would you be open for that? Now, if they're a genuine friend, genuine family, if they're foolish enough, what do you think they're going to say? In nine out of ten times, they're going to say, yeah, sure, absolutely. But here's what I've discovered. The people that like you the most, in most cases, are the ones that are likely to buy the most. Because people buy from people they like. And so what I discovered was my conversion rate when I'm selling to friends, families, and fools is about 80%. Okay? And what that does is what do you think that gives me that I didn't have before? That gives me money. You see, in the early stages of business, I'm all about, I am literally the most frugal person you're probably ever going to meet. Okay? The way to make copper wire is try and take a two-cent piece off me. Okay? I will turn that into copper wire in a heartbeat. Now, what you've got to understand, in the early stages of business, I don't like spending money. The business has to pay for itself, okay? Because any money that you invest in that business is going to potentially lower the lifespan. And so the reason I don't spend any money on marketing is I want to make sure I've got a good product or service before I invest any money into the marketing process. Now, by the way, I, the reason I bootstrapped everything is because most of my startups, when I started them, I didn't have any fucking money. And so I had no choice. And going back when I started businesses, capital raising wasn't a cool thing. And even today, I'm still very, I have a small scale VC firm and I, I will not, in most cases, touch startups unless they're post-revenue. Because I'm of the belief that if a startup can't make money, it's not a business in the first place. So for me, I like to cash flow everything from sales. The best investment strategy you're ever going to have, ever going to get, is being able to sell your own product or service. If you can't sell your own product or service, you're probably going to need investment. And the moment you start taking investment, you give away equity. And the moment you start giving away equity, you give away, in some cases, levels of control. I don't like giving away control. I'm a bit of a control freak. And so for me personally, I like to cash flow everything from sales. Now, you're a startup. You start making sales. What is the average fucking startup bear the moment they start making sales, they've now got money in their bank, guess what they do? Spend it on what? Shit. They don't need to impress people in most cases, they don't even fucking like or know. Okay, whereas what you need to do is you need to have a conservation mentality for the first five to seven years where you're willing to live just above the poverty line and reinvest everything back into your business. The reason most businesses never succeed at the level that's required is because they're constantly pulling money out of it. A business is a hyper-leveraged investment vehicle, and if you're not investing into your business, then it is not going to be growing at the level that's required in order to give you the freedom that you're looking for. So my philosophy is, if you're making $150,000 now and you're pulling all profit out of the business, I guarantee you 10 years from now, you'll be 
be in the exact same spot, possibly, most likely, in a lesser spot, because you'll be on the verge of burnout. If you are willing for the next, let's call it five to seven years, to reinvest every single dollar above the basic cost of living for five to seven years, you will have a multi-million dollar enterprise that runs under management that doesn't require to be, you to be there, and then you can fucking buy all the properties in the world, you can buy all the fucking shares in the world, you can work on your investment strategy and fucking go on lots of holidays. Does this make sense? Until then, you can get some of the greatest views in this country for $2.50 a night camping. 